last two years we've been developing a rainwater harvesting system and that's all fully installed. In that, we now collect enough of our own rainwater off the car box out through there, off the garden centre floor through here, and that goes off through pipework and ends up in our gathering pond down at the bottom. Um, and then that gets pumped up into a reservoir and that has 4,000 cubic metres in it, which will see us through, we hope, the worst summer. But if we do get a drought that goes through a summer and then a winter and then another summer, we might be in trouble. So what we're trying to do is connect as many roofs and floors in, in where we can collect rainwater into that system so that we can fill the system quickly up, it, even if there's a summer rainstorm rather than half of it go to waste that you're actually collecting everything that comes in from that. And that's where we're starting here. So you can see the gutter there, just broken out this concrete and linked into our existing uh, pipework, which is already installed under there. Uh, this bit's a silk trap just to catch the leaves before it goes into access. Well, we're just walking down now to the next part of the rainwater harvesting system. We've been gathering off the roofs of the garden centre and off the, uh, the uh, car parks as well. Going down into the drains, it's now coming through, piped down through this section here, and it comes out into this gathering pond over here, which we've landscaped around. But this is basically the collection pond. It also acts as a silt trap, so if there's anything that's suspended solids or anything there, we've got time just to drop down out of solution. And on the far side, just in front of the building there, and underneath the deck, we've got a pump that automatically kicks in and lifts the water on its final journey, well, its next journey actually, up to the reservoir at the top. And we've made, it, we've made it into a beautiful feature as well, um, rich in wildlife and a uh, great place to come and relax and watch the dragonflies during the summer. So this is the storage pond for the uh, irrigation water that we use for the garden centre. So it's about 32 metres by 32 metres, tapers down towards the bottom. So the bottom is about 12 metres by 12 metres. It actually holds 4,000 cubic metres of water. And this is filled purely with rainwater that we've gathered from the garden centre roof. You can see this pipe here in, it just pops in. That's where it comes up from the gathering pond when, when it's full, and it'll pump out into there. But it'll also naturally catch, you know, consider that we over the last couple of three months we've had about 14 to 15 inches of rain um possibly more actually probably nearer 20 inches of rain and that gathering from a wider area as it narrows it actually creates uh, it rises up quicker than that but if you look out to we've got a little gray thing in there i don't know whether you can see that near the rope ladder um that actually is a special device that stops the algae growing in here so it just runs off an electric pulse with this very fascinating fact that algae actually doesn't just sit in the water at one level, it goes up and down in the water column. So it comes up to photosynthesize and then it goes back down to pick up nutrient and then it comes back up again. What this does is it interrupts that buoyancy, it stops it forming its buoyancy agent, it gets stuck in one element of the water and then dies out because it can't either pick up enough nutrient or can't get enough light. So it stops the algae forming and, and, and souring the water. Uh, this rope ladder's in there just in case uh, somebody fell in, they would have a way of scrabbling out of it. And finally, the bit where we were, why we've built all of this is under that blue float there is connected the pump, which takes it out into our irrigation system to go around the garden. We use it, we've used it all the way through 2023, it's our first summer. As it happened, that was quite a damp summer, so we, we went down, we used about 1,200 cubic metres last, last year, um, and then we filled that up quite quickly again. As I said earlier, I think what we're really worried about is when we get a, a dry summer, and then we get a dry winter, and then we get another dry summer to follow, we wouldn't have had. So we, what we're trying to do is just plug as much catchment that we've got into it, so even a summer rainstorm, is actually, you know, we're picking up off an area two or three times the size of this pond, which helps capture as much water as we can. And any excess going back out into uh, re-wetting the landscape. We were taking that water out originally for years, either out of the River Froom when it's at low flow during the summertime, which is not great for the wildlife down there. Um, so that that's an absolute massive plus. We're not taking it from um, 
the main system with of course that's treated water which is expensive and also it's great water that can be used for other purposes for other people to use as well so yeah we're, we're self-sufficient in that and the more self-sufficient we can get the better we switched our suppliers to um so we're renewable owners you're on our suppliers and uh, we've got uh, not linked to this part of the system but the rest of the uh, electricity for the garden center is now uh, augmented by uh, augmented by about 60 percent of um, solar panels any roofs that you've got that currently might be going there probably are mostly all roof water will be going to a safe way five meters away from your buildings um, or into storm drainage if it's going into storm drainage that's not good at all because that's adding to um, overflows of sewage at um, uh, uh, peak uh, rainfall time. So anything you can do to actually capture that in um, rainwater bases or um, butts, then all the better.